Since it was first played at a New Jersey high school in 1968, Ultimate Frisbee has grown into a worldwide competitive team sport, not quite like any other. San Diego, California, paradise by the Pacific, and host of the 1999 Ultimate Frisbee Club National Championships. Here at the Del Mar Polo Grounds on fields 70 yards long by 40 yards wide, elite club teams from across the country will face off to prove who's the best and who will represent the U.S. at next year's World Championships in Germany. You know, we got guys that, are, that you can't stop. You know, they're just going to get open and they got the throws. Well, I think what we need to do is really just play our game and, you know, kind of exude our confidence. We believe in ourselves. Win? How's that for a strategy? <laughs> Score more points? And we want to be in Germany representing the United States next yeah. year. That's, that's the goal. That's what's moving us. As the 16 clubs prepare for the four-day tournament, there's little doubt in anyone's mind who will be the team to beat. Boston. 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 I think uh, Boston. They are just money. Death or glory? also known as DOG, is an all-star team from Boston, vying to be the first to win six consecutive national championships. They say we're seated first. Um, I think we're looking pretty good. We've got you know, a huge team, a lot of good players. Uh, we're feeling very confident, feeling very fresh. We have won five in a row here, so I guess that makes us favorites too. But though they are favored in this tournament, DOG has come here with something else to prove, that they are the equal of New York, New York, their former rival that won six national titles in the late 80s and early 90s. Uh, New York, New York was the dynasty before us, and they used to beat us all the time. It was just kind of depressing. We'd lose one game a year or one big game a year, and we'd lose to them. So this is six in a row if we get it. A victory by dog this year would give them the right to call themselves the definitive dynasty in the short history of Ultimate Frisbee. For many of those braving the harsh San Diego winter, this weekend is mainly an excuse to hang out in the festive atmosphere. For others, it is their first look at the sport of Ultimate Frisbee. Ultimate is played in teams of seven on seven. You start playing with what's called a pull, and it's sort of like a kickoff. Somebody tries to make a long, uh, generally high throw from their end zone line and tries to loft it up in the air so they can run down and set up their defense. And when the offensive team receives it, they have to establish a pivot foot, like basketball. You advance the frisbee down the field by passing to your teammate. Once you have the frisbee, you can't run with it, and you score a goal by throwing it to a teammate who is standing in the end zone. Every time you catch it in the end zone, you get a point. You can turn from offense to defense very quickly. So you can be running very hard and making an open cut. If there's a turnover somewhere on the field, you're now on defense. The defensive player is trying to keep you from throwing downfield. Three, four, five. You have 10 seconds to get rid of the Frisbee. So when you catch it and establish your pivot foot, the defensive man will come up and count to 10. And if you don't get rid of the Frisbee uh, by the count of 10, then it's a turnover. A disc can turn over in a number of ways. If it goes out of bounds uh, or if it hits the ground or if it's intercepted by the defensive team. In, in any of those cases, play doesn't stop it. It, it immediately changes possession and goes to the other team. A good player can throw a backhand, a forehand, hammer, and for the advanced users, the high release backhand, the scuba, and the push pass. Games are played to 15, uh, most of them anyways. The later games, like the semis and finals, I think, are played to 17. These players out here, they are, they give everything they've got to it, and that's what's so exciting about it. What time is that? Yeah. As the tournament began, 16 teams from five national regions came out primed to prove that they deserve a shot at the title. 
Clubs with as many as 25 players have practiced together for a year or more to qualify for nationals. Though only one team would raise the trophy on Sunday, today it was anybody's tournament. Try to improve. start of the first adventure. We made it through the first, over the first adventure with the first valley and the first bar fight and the first girl that we loved. Mm -hmm. Now we go into the next one where there's a whole new town and a new Top Gun, a new beautiful girl and a whole new setup of circumstances. Very so really colorful way of putting it. That's the way I want to make sure that these guys are ready for a long right. adventure. It's kind of like a, a, a good long book. As the sun set on the second day of play, half the teams had been eliminated and the other half had earned the right to advance to the quarterfinals. Eight teams from eight different cities, Boston, Santa Barbara, Houston, Seattle, Minneapolis, San Francisco, Raleigh, and Canadian champion Vancouver. For these clubs, the real tournament was about to begin. First up would be a canine confrontation, dog from Boston against the Houston Hounds. Playing with classical efficiency, dog had barely been challenged in this tournament. Inspired by Steve Mooney, a participant in 18 consecutive nationals, and rising star Fortunat Mueller, the 99 college nationals MVP, Boston looked unstoppable. Oh, we've got a lot of old guys. Uh, I consider myself young at 34 for this team. And we thought for sure the old guys were going to be retiring after last year, but they ended up coming back, and like almost everybody from last year played again. But we've got a great crop of younger players, too, and we just didn't want to miss the opportunity to try to incorporate the old and the young this year. Facing dog would be the Hounds of Houston, a dangerous group of Southern All-Stars and free agent gunslingers itching for a showdown. This is our third time at Nationals. And uh, our first time we got shut out. Last year we did real well, we were four and two. We were real happy with that. And uh, so we're definitely looking to improve on our, our performance. We think we're a much stronger team this year than we were last year. Let's get going! The 
Hounds came out guns blazing. Though they were the underdogs, they threw everything they had at Boston. Eventually, Boston got down to business as usual, with dominating D and quick strikes for scores. Any hopes of a Hounds comeback went down with star Brian Hereford, out for the game with a sprained ankle. Boston took no pity and cruised past Houston to the semis. On an adjacent field, two teams from opposite sides of the country were engaged in a culture clash of their own. From the west, the Condors of Santa Barbara. Runners up last year in a thrilling championship game, the Condors were back with a battered team looking for revenge. I think last year we were one of the youngest teams at Nationals. This year, um, we were probably in the lower half, one of the very young teams. Um, a lot of our players come out of the uh, college team from Santa Barbara called the Black Tide, um, who's also been very successful, you know, one, it, the most successful college team. Santa Barbara would face off against North Carolina's Ring of Fire, a team with hot players and an even hotter temperament. With a name inspired by Johnny Cash, the squad from Raleigh had a burning desire for an upset bid. But it was the Condors who came out on fire, breaking open the second half with a 7-1 scoring run. Bolstered by the return of Captain Steve Dugan, Playing in his first game since breaking his throwing arm only months earlier, the Condors easily extinguished the fire and soared to the next round. <laughs> Meanwhile, the battle between two West Coast rivals was just heating up. From the Bay Area came Jam a young, talented squad who turned to coach and former player Mike O'Dowd for words of wisdom. This year, we had a youth movement, got rid of some of our veterans that were hard-nosed players and really went, for, and went after the intellect, and I think that that's what's helped us. Jam's opponent would be the Canadian national champion Furious George from Vancouver. Already guaranteed a spot at Worlds, the Canadians had come south of the border to claim the whole continent for themselves. We were all sitting around in a room. We didn't like the old team name, which they'd had forever and ever, because we, we brought a whole bunch of new guys in one year, about five years ago. And uh, it was just a, a play on a bunch of cartoon characters we were throwing around and came up with Furious George. Against Jam, however, the favored Furious George found themselves down 13-9 at halftime. We have to play so hard. We're obviously going to win. We're going to win this game 15-13, because the D is going to crush. We must be cautious work it 100%, the, the breaks will come. Be sure, be 100%, everybody dial in and believe it. This is gonna be a 15-13 final game. Jam needed two scores to put the game away, but faced with an increasingly relentless Vancouver defense, the young team came unglued and made the first of several unforced errors. Way to go, Furious! Furious George punished Jam by converting their mistakes into score after unanswered score. Yeah! When the game was over, Vancouver had engineered a remarkable comeback, and Jam was left to ponder the aftermath of another late-game letdown. And you can see, also, 
by the way that we played this game that we had no business being in the semi because we weren't good enough. All right? We just weren't good enough. And you guys have to realize that and go back to the drawing board and work a little bit harder. At the very beginning of this game, I said the winner of the game is the team that gets the 50 and first. I don't care if we get down 13-9. We were down 13-9. We scored six points in a row. 50. Everybody, hey, team, that's the way we win. We're an all-star team. We're going to take it. The next game is ours. Next game is the 17. We've got to score two more points in this game. Here is George. It's not done. <laughs> The last game would feature teams from Seattle and Minneapolis in perhaps the best matchup of quarterfinals. After an impressive first two days, the ragtag blaze of glory looked to their confident veterans, including players from the old New York, New York squad, to make a run at the trophy. We're in a bit of an odd situation because we're, we're the one team here that does not practice together. We. Uh, we train on our own, we're out running track, we find each other's psych missiles on the email, trying to, all right, I got my mile time down to such and such, so we're coming into it and figuring stuff out on the field as it happens. What Blaze didn't count on, however, was Sub-Zero, their quarterfinal opponents from Minneapolis, where extreme winters make ultimate a part-time passion. We start <laughs> early, as soon as the snow melts, we gotta get back Which into like shape. like July. <laughs> our I mean, all our fat comes on, stay warm, and then, uh... It was warm when we left, but it wouldn't surprise us to be, uh, you know, snow covered when we get back. And it's pretty late to not have snow on the ground, actually, up there. We got some guys who play broomball, though. <laughs> they, they, they play ultimate to train for broomball. Right. Blaze and Sub-Zero came out emotionally charged. Each team believed that it deserved the remaining spot in the semifinals. In a battle so tightly contested it had to be shortened for time, Sub-Zero's defense finally prevailed. And they put the game just out of reach, freezing any notions Blaze of Glory had of going all the way. I, for one, expect to be playing tomorrow. Anybody else share that sentiment? Yeah, baby! Yeah, 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 yeah you guys! That is so cute! That is so cute! Zero! 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 Now there were four teams. Boston. Minneapolis. Santa Barbara. Vancouver. Four teams, four different styles, one goal. Win one today, one tomorrow, and go home champions. First up, the cerebral veterans of Dog against the hard-charging Furious George. No strangers to each other, Boston and Vancouver had faced off three times already this year. The question this game, would it be the year of the dog or the year of the monkey? Uh, they beat us at Worlds last year and took the world title. Uh, they also beat us at Tune-Up, a big tournament a couple of months ago. We have a lot of height and a lot of speed, so we like to use that. And uh, we still want to be able to use it in conditions like this, and I think we found a way to, so. Boston struck quickly to take an early lead. Furious refused to abandon their own game plan 
and sliced through the Boston defense with her patented scoring strikes. Darius! Shark! Darius! Shark! Though faced with a tenacious Canadian defense, Boston still seemed to get all the breaks. You're getting the block, Brian! Yeah, Brian, you can stay there. Dance, Brian, dance! As the old rivalry heated up, the two teams went score for score in an offensive stare down. Play these, play these, fan! Play these, fan! Yeah, Boston! And then, Boston blinked. With a string of miscues and a defiant, furious defense, the momentum began to shift toward Vancouver. Furious found themselves up nine to seven. I have waited all tournament to be down two at halftime. Character to win games. It's easy to win when you're ahead. It's much harder to win from behind and build character. Win this game, guys. It's gonna be a joyride. We keep driving. These guys are now scared, but it, it, that doesn't mean they're gonna quit. This team hasn't won five times for nothing, okay? But they're, they're free. I can tell you right now, they're free. It's happening again. What? What the? What's going on with this furious George team? You gotta run harder. I don't care, you're getting tired, you're not getting tired, okay? They are more tired, they're old and slow. Run faster than they do. Keep running, keep pounding, keep It's desire, it's all desire. It's all desire. You wanna play tomorrow? You guys wanna play tomorrow? Yeah! Then keep it up here and run your nuts off and we are playing tomorrow. Come on, let's George! Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Though somewhat shaken by their first half deficit, Dog came out of halftime with their usual confidence. Furious responded and lit the fuse that would ignite a dazzling display of offensive fireworks. Then, with the score tied at 14, Furious came up short. Dog took advantage and recaptured the lead. Feeling the pressure now, Furious missed yet another opportunity and gave the disc back to Boston once again. Yeah! 
16-14. Game point, Boston. That's it, Fry, go to that. Fry, that's gonna be it. The dog D came hard and forced a third furious turnover. But this time, Boston failed to convert. And the Canadians pulled within one. And then, facing game point again, the normally sure-handed Boston gave the disc back to Furious with a chance to tie the score. Vancouver smelled blood and went for it all. Damn it! This time, Dog would not be denied. Furious George, their worthy opponent, would go home empty-handed. It was the bottom to the top, everybody put out. Whether you were on the field or on the sideline, and that made the difference. Feel it, feel it. What does it feel like? It feels more. like it's not enough. You, no, it's not, not enough. one battle. That was simply enough. Team That's, 7. We won the battle. Team In the other semi-final game, it was the Santa Barbara Condors against Sub-Zero from Minneapolis. You know, we put our strength versus their strength, and if they can stop us, then they should win, but we, so far, we're, we're doing pretty well with it. Sub-Zero is a great team. They're really impressive, and they're young. I think they'll be around for a long time. We play very well together, and we believe in each other from the last person on the team to the best player on the team, we feel we're playing for each other and not just for individual glory. A lot of these guys come from Carleton University in Minnesota. <clears throat> and uh, we've been playing these guys in the college national championship probably for the last five years. We've matched up against them at one time or another, and it's been a real bitter rivalry. They haven't gotten us yet. They haven't gotten the best of us, and so I think every time they come at us, they come harder, they come with more desire, and it makes us take our game to the next level. It looked like history might repeat itself today as the Condors opened the second half with a three-point lead. But Sub-Zero wasn't about to dwell on the past. They came back hard at the Condors to pull within one and proved that this was going to be a game. Utilizing weapons like six foot eight inch Josh Wilhelm, Sub Zero moved past Santa Barbara to take their first lead of the second half. Two, three. Condors! 
the Condors regrouped and raised their game to another level. As the pressure increased, the sub-zero offense began to freeze up. Twice, Sub-Zero tried to tie the score. And twice, they were denied by a Condor's defense that refused to let up. Sub-Zero stepped up their attack to keep the game close. But the Condor struck back and moved within one score of a victory. Sub-Zero's dream of a title was in danger of melting, and it finally did on this foot block. The Condors sealed the victory and got their wish. Another championship grudge match against the undefeated Death or Glory. Yeah! For Sub-Zero, it was back to Broomball. Finals. Today would crown the last ultimate champion of the 20th century. It was the perfect matchup. Number one seed against number two. Undefeated Boston against a fired up Condors team with only one loss in the tournament. It would be a repeat of last year's national championship in Florida. A 17-15 Boston victory in one of the most exciting ultimate finals ever played. I think we stack up pretty well. I think we play uh, very good defense on them. We've played them one time this season and they've beaten us at, at the World Championships. Uh, but I think our offense can score against their defense. Uh, I think it'll be very tight. I think they're a very uh, solid, deep team. And because they've been there before, they'll know what to do. You want to take it away from Boston? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think this is five, six in a row for them. We are diving on every goddamn pass. We are so chilly on offense. Let's go. Who's the best team out here? We, we are. Who are we? Connors. Who's the best player out here? I am. Who are we? Connors. Who are we? Connors. Who are we? Connors. Boston came out ready and went to the tried and true Fortunat Mueller to open the scoring. Get on it. Santa Barbara started cold and turned it over early. But their defense stepped up, and the Condors announced in no uncertain terms that they had come to play. Unaffected by the Condor's intensity, Boston turned to their dangerous deep game to even the score. As Dog and the Condors jockeyed for position, the game began to heat up. Both teams rose to the occasion, playing like championship contenders and trading point after point.
Condors had their chances to take the lead, but Boston held them at arm's length. At halftime, Dog led the Condors nine to seven. This is it, right now. Crazy. We go back in there and we take over. We take over. This is our game. This is our game to take. They're Boston. So what? They're so not what? Superman. Yeah. We're better. We're younger. We're faster. We're stronger. Let's show it. We really show it on defense. It would be Dog, however, that showed up on D, converting a Condors turnover into a three-point lead. Feeling momentum slipping away, the Condors did everything they could to keep it close. But Boston was proving to be a team of destiny, and they increased their lead despite several spectacular Condors attacks. Condors fought back with late game heroics and undying bravado. But this was turning out to be dog's day and no one seemed capable of denying them. At game point, with a score 16 to 12, the final throw would fittingly go to Fortunat Mueller, and Dog would win their sixth national championship in a row. This one is sweet. You know, every year it's different. Uh, there's different chemistry. Winning with the young guys, a new team. I didn't, honestly didn't think we'd be here eight weeks ago. I honestly didn't. And uh, the last three games, we just, on a tra trajectory, just ramped it up. It was beautiful. Yeah, yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. It's such a hard tournament to win. And uh, every year, especially after we've won a couple, you know, we go in, you're favored, and you just, people are like, oh, you're going to take another one. It's hard to do. You never can count on it. And uh, it's just fabulous. One, two, three, dog! Yeah, baby! For the Condors, it would soon be time to regroup and start planning for a run at next year's trophy. I really thought we were going to beat him today, but came up a little short. What is the ball those guys? They're just good, man. They got so many. They got some. They're very versatile and they're smart. It took them five, five chances before they won. Before they went on this uh, this run of of six six championships in a row. And this is our second. So maybe next year. Condors, 1999 Open Division, second place. <laughs> And to Boston, 1999 UPA Open Division champs, six times in a row. This is our six in a row. It makes it very special. New York, New York had five in a row. 
Uh, this is our sixth. Back in 94 when we won our first, I uh, had a videotape of the final. I wrote one of six on it. And now this is, uh, I guess this completes the series. Undefeated in Nationals competition, death or glory could rightfully take its place as the most dominant team in the history of Ultimate Frisbee. This is the ultimate.